السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ متحته القائلون ولا يحسي نعماه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون فتر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالسخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة ثم الصلاة والسلام على العبد المؤيد والرسول المصدد حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين. عباد الله وسكم ونفسي بتقوى الله. اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي إن يومنا هذا هو آخر جمعة من شهر ذي الحجة الذي أوجب الله فيه الحجة لمن استطاع إليه سبيلا فبهذا نودع سنة تقذت بعد أيام أو تقضى بعد أيام ومرت كلحظة خاطفة وهي مشحونة بالأحداث والتطورات والتحولات والتحديات ونحن نستقبل عاما جديدا الذي يبتدأ بشهر محرم الحرام وهو العام الهجري عند المسلمين هجر النبي صلى الله عليه وآله من مكة إلى المدينة وترك ماله ومتنه طلبا لمرضاة الله وإعلاء كلمة الله وهناك آيات كثيرة يتحدث عن سنة الهجرة إن الذين آمنوا والذين هاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله أولئك يرجون رحمة الله والله غفور رحيم وهكذا تلتغي الهجرة النبوية الشريفة والهجرة الحسينية في وحدة الهدف والمقصد ولذلك قال صلى الله عليه وآله حسين مني وأنا من حسين أحب الله من أحب حسينا هو سبت من الأسباط وروى الترمذي أن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله أخذ بيد الحسن والحسين وقال هذان ابناي فمن أحبهما فقد أحبني ومن أبغذهما فقد أبغذني فعلينا وعليكم أيها الإخوة الأخوات بتعذيم هذه الأيام القادمة أيام عشراء أيام الحزن والبكاء لسيد الشهداء وأبي الأحرار والمجاهدين والمهاجرين إن إحياء الأيام القادمة فريضة روحية وهي من مصادق تعظيم شعائر الله وهو الحديث عن الإيمان والوفاء والكرم والشجاعة أبي الأحرار الإمام الحسين عليه السلام إن ذكرى وقعة الطف تذكرنا شجاعة الحسين وأهل بيته وأصحابه الذين وقفوا أمام 
طاغية زمانهم يزيد بن معاوية وعزموا على إيقاظ أمتهم وتحريكها وتنبيهها من خلال تضحياتهم إن ذكر عاشوراء فرصة لتعقل وتعلم الانتساب الصحيح والتشيع الحقيقي إلى الحسين عليه السلام وأهل البيت عليه السلام وليس الانتساب من خلال البكاء فقط بل من طريق العمل بالقرآن الكريم وإحياء سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وآله والدعوة إلى قيم الإسلامية ليلا ونهارا الأمر بالمعروف النهي عن المنكر الاهتمام بأمور المسلمين صلة الأرحام الإحسان بالوالدين المعاملة الحسنة العمل بالفرائض الاجتناب عن الرذائل فهنيئا للذين تشيعوا للذين انتسبوا إلى أئمة أهل البيت انتصابا صحيحا وإسلاميا فالذي يبكي للحسين عليه السلام ولكن يترك صلاته ويبتل صيامه ويغفل عن واجباته ويعمل محرماته فإنه لا ينتسب إلى الذي دعا لأبي ثمالة في ذهر عاشوراء لأنه ذكره بوقت الصلاة نعم هذا هو الإمام الحسين الانتصاب إلى الحسين وأهل البيت هو الانتصاب إلى الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وتهرهم من كل إثم ونقص وسوء وفحشاء وأدناس هنيئا للذين يحيون ذكر عاشوراء متناسبا مع رسالة الحسين وشخصيته وأهدافه الذين يعتبرون كربلاء فاتحة لأبواب السهوة والحرية والعزة والكرامة للأمة الذين يريدون أن يذعوا أغلال الجهل والاستعباد عن أوتانهم وشعوبهم نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن ينبهنا من نومة الغافلين ويوفقنا لخدمة شريعة سيد المرسلين ويزين قلوبنا بالنور القرآن ومحبة أهل البيت عليهم السلام وإن شاء الله نحن نبدأ برنامج عشراء من اليوم الاثنين القادم الساعة السابعة والنصف مساء إن شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شأنك هو الأبتر صدق الله العلي العظيم صلى الله على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد <تصفيق> الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره فنعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله أكرمه بالنبوة وجعله رحمة للعالمين اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك بحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك وصل على وسيه وأخيه أمير المؤمنين وعلى الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على سبتي الرحمة الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة
وصلى على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف القائم المهدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم كن لوليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعى وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآله محمد I'd like to continue our discussion about the concept of a Tawheed and this is the 11th khutbah on this issue. Finally, we started reflecting on the last three verses of Surah Al-Hashr and these three verses are a mirror of 18 characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we went through some of those Asma'ul Husna, Al-Malik, the authority of Allah, Al-Quddus, His Holiness, As-Salam, Allah is the source of peace, Al-Mu'min, He is the source of protection. Continuing these verses, Allah is Al-Muhaymin from Al-Haymana, Al-Shahidu Lima Khafi Anh. There is nothing can be hidden from God. Al-Shahidu Fawq Al-Shahud. He is the witness above all the witnesses. So Allah is Al-Muhaymin, means He is the real superpower. When you hear the word superpower, that is Allah, no one else. He is Al-Muhaymin. He is Al-Aziz, Al-Ghalib, Al-Ladhi La Yughlab, Al-Ghalib, Al-Ladhi La Yafutuhu Shay. He is the real winner, and no one can win. Allah's authority and power. لا يمكن الفرار من حكومته. You cannot go somewhere that his authority doesn't exist and he is absent. لا فاتح لما أغلقت ولا مغلق لما فتحت. This is the meaning of Aziz, the dignity and majesty of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. But he is also a Jabbar, but not Jabbar that we say Jabbar we think about the dictator and Mustabid. Jabbar in a sense of Nobody can resist the willing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the purity, the righteousness, the dignity of Allah. This is one meaning. Also, Jabbar from Jabara means to repair something. Al Jabbar means the source of compensation that anywhere there is any shortcoming, any problem, it's only Allah is the one who can fix it. And only through the will of Allah, we can fix the problem. Jubran, Jabara, Jabara Shay. In dua we say, Ya Jabir al-Azmil Kasir. When the, the bone is broken, the one who fix it and repair that bone is Allah. 
So Jabbar is the one that anything, anyone who is broken only through the teachings of Allah and through his will we can fix all this problem. So another meaning for Al-Jabbar who Al-Muslih that is Allah is who repair and reconcile fix things and covers the shortcomings. Another quality of Allah Al-Mutakabbir Mutakabbir for us is a very bad thing. You know, for us to exercise kibr, this is a serious sin to be mutakabbir. Because if we tend to be mutakabbir, we are claiming something that's not our right. Because kibr means adama, means glory, greatness. Since we don't have al kibriya, since we don't have that glory and greatness, then when we try to claim it, so we are gossip, we are, we are lying. We are claiming something that we don't have it and doesn't belong to us. So it's bad for us to be mutakabbir, but for Allah he is mutakabbir in sense of Ya Ahl al kibriya wal Adama. He is the owner of kibriya glory and growth, greatness. So for Allah is a very natural thing to be mutakabbir, but for us is very unnatural. Why we should be mutakabbir? Somebody who lays Allah dunya wal akhira. We don't have any ownership over dunya or akhira. We, we are extremely weak. We have no right to be mutakabbir. The best thing for us is to be mutawada, to be humble. That works with us, with our character. But kibr and that uh, istikbar and takabbur, they don't work. Subhanallah amma yushrikun. Pure and glorify his God from what they associate with him. This subhanallah tasbih is repeated in the Quran and at the end of this verse, one more we are going to talk about the, the concept of subhanallah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yasifun. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzata amma yasifun. God is munazzah, is purified far from all we think that we try to imagine Allah subhanallah, he is above that, he is, he is higher than our imagination. Subhanallah, yusabbihu lahu ma fi samawat wal ard, yusabbihu lahu man fi samawat wal ard. Everyone and everything supposed to say Subhanallah. Then the last verse, huwa Allahu al-khaliq al-bari wal you see, all these three verses start from who Allah? Who Allah? He is Allah. Who is Allah? Well, He was Al Malik, Al Mu'min, Al Muhaymin, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Mutakabbir. But He is Al Khaliq. But He is Allah to begin with. Means one God is one. That means that in our faith, brother, Islamic faith, Tawheed, monotheism, oneness of God, unity of God, is the heart of our aqidah. The foundation of everything in Islam is a Tawheed. Kalamat al Tawheed. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. No to Thanawiya, no to Tathlif. There is no two gods or three gods or ten gods. There is only one. We already mentioned Adlati, Al Amani, Al Afali, Al Ibadi. God is one in essence, God is one in attributes, God is one in action, and God is one in worship in all these four areas. That's why we start our Adar, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. That is our Shahad. When we go to Salat, Tashahud, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. This term of La ilaha illallah is Sha'ar al Iman, Sha'ar al Islam. Inna ilahakum la wahid. 
Your Lord, He is only one. Your Lord, our Lord. Whether you are Muslim, you are Christians, you are Jewish, you belong to any other heavenly religion, there is only one God. It's not only Islam brought this subject. No. Quran says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِيَ إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ It's not only you, but any other messengers that we sent before you, we told him the same thing, that there is one God and worship only one. So the oneness of God, the Tawheed, brothers and sisters, is the call of revelation. If you go to revelation, it's only one God. If you go to rationality, again, there is only one God. If there was more, more than one God, that would ruin the world, more would corrupt the universe. Bring more confusion if there was two gods and two authorities. Then there was a big fighting in running this universe because two gods and two visions and two dimensions. So even if you go with the rationality, human reason says there must be only one God. If you go with the human conscience, even if you go for our conscience, our conscience says there is only one voice, a tawheed in this world. Even if you go with science, the scientific observation, in the fikhat al samawat wal ard wa ikhtilaf al layl wal nahar, in the akhir al ayah, la ayat al liqawm yaqilun. If you look at the heavens and the earth and the stars and the oceans and mountains and if you observe everything in this universe, you come to the same conclusion of a tawheed. So tawheed is nida'ul deen wa nida'ul aql wa nida'ul fitra wa nida'ul ilm. Everyone says there must be only one authority in this world. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that reason, those who are mushrik, those who chose a shirk, they are doing a big injustice to God, a big injustice to their conscience, a big injustice to reality. Shirk is a big oppression. That's a big, big deviation. Now, there are some people who may worship the stars, worship, they worship the sun, the moon, they worship the trees, they worship the oceans, they worship the, the material stuff. That is a shirk al jali That is the obvious shirk that everybody knows that this guy is worshipping stars or sun. That's obviously Ladul Muladim. But there are people who may not officially worship the moon and the sun and trees and stones. They may say that we are even Mormon, we believe in God. But the reality of their life, they are worshipping money, they worship position, they worship prestige. They do riya in their life. They are also mushrik. <coughs> but a shirk al-khafi, it is like, it's not very manifest, but it is a hidden shirk. And both shirks are wrong. Now this one, who Allah? Who is this Allah? Al-Khaliq is your creator. But Khaliq not like any other Khaliq. Who are ahsan al khaliqin the best creator. How? Because anything that we as human beings may make, we make it based on the material that already exists and the, the model that already exists. Like if human beings make an airplane, 
All of the iron and other material exists in the nature. And already the mother is there, the birds. When we look at the tuyur, we, we, we learn that, oh, we can make something like that. But when we say, Allah huwa al-khaliq, yani huwa badi'u al-samawat wal-a'd, al-khilqa bimana al-ibda'a, that he created everything out of nothing. There was no material before, and there was no model, no plan. He didn't copy it from anybody else. So al khaliq means khalaga min ghayra wujudin wa min ghayra suratin. None of them exist. And this is why he is Ahsan al khaliqin al bari He is al bari Mean barim from Bara'a and also Tabra'a comes from, from the same from same thing that Yani Al Arbara'a Tabari from somebody when is that we like cut our relationship with somebody. Bara'a mean Bata'a. Who Allah al means when he created us or created this universe, he also gave distinction, he cut everything in a portion and he measured everything, that means that every mujud and every object has its own definition and distinction. That he created everything and he gave characteristics, mumayizat, every, everything. So everything is different from everything else because not only he created, but he cut it and fixed it and gave a different identity to different object and subject. And at the same time, who was Musawwar? He created, he fixed in certain measurement, and then he gave a surah. That means that he is a fashioner, and he is the one who gives forms, not only creation and distinction, but also forms and different image. You look at more than seven billion people on this planet. You cannot find two human beings that they are exactly the same. Look at this message, everybody is different. You go on the street, people are different. How come that he made seven billion people of today? And people of yesterday, and people of 100 years ago, and people of 1,000 years ago. <laughs> and nobody is the same. Because he is more somewhere. He is giving different surah and different forms. You may find some, you know, exceptionally, you know, twins, they are a little similar. But you cannot find people 100%. 100% the same in al-khalq or al-khulq. Khulq is different and khalq is different. You see the, the, the physical body is different and the spiritual and intellectual body is different. Because we have one khaliq, one musawwar. He gives different surah. And he said, Inna Allah khalaq Adam ala suratih. Out of everything that he created, he created us human being of his own surah, his own image. Yes, his own image doesn't mean that God is like us, God is not physical. So what does it mean that human being is the image of God? It is like we say Suratullah, like we say Ardullah, what does that mean, Ardullah? Or Baytullah, or Yadullah, these are different manifestations, this power of God. Yadullah means the power of God, the hand of God means power of God. So here, Suratullah doesn't mean that God is physical and He made human beings the same image. That means that Allah gave human beings the quality that we can carry akhlaq Allah. If Allah is al-Sami, al-Basir, al-Muhsin, al-Khabir, al-Alim, al-Adil, al-Wadud, al-Rahim, he created us in a way that we can carry the same qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can be like God in the sense of this quality. But unfortunately, 
This is not the case of every human being. We gave you the best surah, best form, the best identity. But then when you chose, the human beings, they choose to be Asfal Safilin, the lowest of the low. That's a different story. When people choose fighting and foolishness and destruction, then they are not Surat Allah, they become image of Iblis. Surat Shaitan, not Surat Rahman anymore. Look at all these people that are suffering. When you listen, when you watch the news every day, every night, what is your feeling? This Shaul al Madruma. There was something in the news that 4,000 suicide bombers so far in Iraq. They counted that 4,000 people, they killed themselves to kill other human beings. 4,000 suicide bombers. This is not Ahsan al Taqweeb. This is Asfal al Safadi. You see, a Shab al Madlum al Asuri. Now, the, the Saudis were not enough, the Salafis were not enough. Now, the, the, the Sahyuniya, they are attacking them too. You heard in the news yesterday there was, you know, bombing, the Israelis bombing uh, a Syrian bases. So, the Saudis and all the Salafis and all these terrorists from everywhere, they were not enough. Now, the Zionists directly came. So really, when you look at human life, it's miserable. Uh, a few days ago, I was uh, driving to Henry Ford Hospital. To, I had an appointment with the doctor. And uh, I was listening to uh, NPR. And there was a guy, Hatfield, is a space guy that uh, has been living in space for six months. He is the guy who, with the uh, spacecraft, uh, orbiting the Earth like uh, 17,500 miles every hour, almost 18,000 miles an hour, and be able to watch the whole world every 90 minutes. Can you imagine that you can have the whole image of, of this planet and every part of the Earth every hour and a half? This is the man coming from this experience when NPR uh, fresh air uh, was talking with this guy that what did you see when you were up? And he said that when I see the good things on this planet and good guys and good areas have a good feeling but then I see the areas that people are doing stupid things and absolutely foolish things I'm amazed of the patience of this planet that is housing all this insanity and all this junoon. And I feel stronger in my faith that there should be a higher authority watching us and witnessing us. And with connection, with faith, we can survive. That's experience of somebody is coming from there who is watching all of this foolishness on this planet of people whose interest is only war, 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 violence, fitna, and fighting. That the people, the victims are not only in Syria and Iraq and, and Pakistan and Afghanistan, even in this country. And then you hear in the news now, Five billion dollars were cut of the food stamps in the United States that for the eight million people depend somehow on this kind of uh, assistance program and now they receive 14% less than they received up to yesterday, Thursday, from Friday. Today, this cut in food stamp uh, is going to be in action and people in this winter I know that some people abuse this food some and the government they get lazy they don't want to work but there are people who 
are really in need because they are handicapped, they are sick, they cannot work. They need assistance from the government. And now, because of war, because of all these experiences in Afghanistan, in Iraq, here and there, not only those people have to suffer, but even people in the United States, they have to suffer. And this is what brothers and sisters, for those of you who are able to, to help people, your relatives, your friends, your neighbors, who are poor, whether they are here or overseas, this is our moral obligation to help. And I want to thank uh, those of you who uh, joined our dinner last Sunday, and you helped. Certainly, you are majur, man jaab al hasana, fallahu ash, am thaliha, and you have experience in life. I experienced in my life. Any time that you do something good, he is watching. He doesn't forget anything. He doesn't miss anything. I went after dinner to Chicago and had a lecture in Bethlehem. It's a huge mosque. This is the biggest and newest Shia mosque in Illinois. And uh, it is uh, a Muslim for everybody. It's for Shia, for Sunni, for everybody. But it is built by Ahl Bayt uh, uh, community over there. And uh, it's a huge mosque and a school, beautiful. And I was very impressed. And uh, I had a lecture on the Ghadir, and the Imam Sheikh Fahazi, he asked people for 300,000 more. And in, in five minutes, they, they collected almost 200,000. Like big community, professionals, and you know, very committed people. When I was living, he gave me, I think, what $1,000. They said, well, $300 for your ticket and $700 for your lecture. And I said, you know, I, I was so impressed with this, uh, and I never got 700 in mass for my lecture. I didn't get much $7 for this khutbah that I give here for 20 years now, but that's another story. So I said, no, you know, use it for the masjid. I, I know that the masjid is completed, but still you need it. And they said, pushing that, no, you have to, this is a gift, at least get for your flight. I said, no, the whole thing, just leave it. I, I rejected, he dropped me at the airport, I'm going through the security and checking and you know, then get into the gate, sitting for a few minutes before the departure, I heard someone said, the, the desk, they are calling me, Mr. Elahi, Mr. Elahi, and I went to the, to the desk and said, can I see you, uh, uh, you know, board uh, pass, pass for, for the boarding. And I, I said, what is this? Now something happened, you know, like a, a security issue or whatever. And uh, they said that uh, your uh, uh, seat is upgraded and uh, we want to give you a, a new, you know, a new pass. And I said, what's this? I look, it was 1A, the very first seat, you know, the very first one. As I get there, already two bottles of water is there, and you know this guy back and forth, would you like something to drink? Would you like tea or coffee? You need juices? You need cookie? I mean, the absolute hospitality, immediately, like a few minutes, as I gave that donation. And I now arrive here, the day after, we got three checks from there, uh, from Chicago, not necessarily from those people, they didn't know even that I did that. I'm sure that, you know, one of them was not even in that gathering and sent us $5,000 donation. And there were a couple of other checks, almost $2,000. And I said, okay, 7,000 bodies, ashram, fella, what is the, another 3,000? I said, maybe that, you know, first class, if I want to do that, that might be two, $3,000. So already God, and maybe God did it through other ways that I didn't realize. He gave ten times, but I just got seven times. I, I'm not aware of, of the rest. So always like that. Brothers and sisters, I, I'm concluding with saying thank you to this brother, Muhammad Mushahidi. He's been here for uh, three years. He completed his job of uh, this artwork has so much details. So much detail. It's not that somebody just wrote something is really a deep work and been working uh, many hours for the last three years. And we want to uh, thank him for his work. And inshallah, on Sunday, we are going to give him a collection of all the photos 
so he can be proud of his work and show to everybody that what he did. I know that some people will say, why we need all of these things? So if we don't need art, we have to close all the universities that they deal with the art and all the Islamic culture and civilization that deal, deal with, the, with the art. And we can say, we don't need Allah. You are Khalid, is enough. Why we need you to be Al-Bar al Musawwar? We don't know Musawwar, you know? We don't need all of this. Just be Khalid and give us just uh, food and we eat and we survive. No, it is really more than that. The, the art of the, the masjid, the, the beauty of masjid, khudu zinatakum, in the kulli masjid, alhamdulillah, he is, he is done with that, but still we owe him and we owe some of the material. Almost there is a bill of $15,000 for both. We cannot tell him at the end that we are not going to give you the, uh, the, the remaining balance. If there are people who didn't help in the fundraising, or they did help in the fundraising, but still they want looking for Ajr and looking for Ash and Saleha, this is an opportunity uh, to do that. Uh, we will notice it. You can see names next, next week at the door, although we don't do it for that reason, but still we need to support this, and inshallah Ashura is coming. Some of you want to uh, sponsor some of the nice in Ashura. We have a wonderful program. Uh, one from London, one from here, both in Arabic and English. And make sure that you bring your family and the kids every night to this program. If we are looking for the uh, identity of our children and the future of our children and education of our children, Ashura is a good opportunity to participate in University of Imam Hussein and learn so many lessons about justice and dignity and uh, human freedom and morality and many more lessons. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma aslih ma fasada min umur al-Muslimin. Allahumma gayyir suha halina bi husn halik. Allahumma la tusallid alayna man la yakhafuka wa la yarhamuna. Allahumma shafi mardana wa al hawaijana wa fukka asrana. Wa taghamad arwah anbatina bil rahmati wa al-maghfirati wa bidwan. Ibad Allah inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wa al-ihsan wa ita'id al-gurba wa yalman al-fahsha wa al-munkar wa al-bari ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon wa ila salati inna salati tanha'an al-fahsha wa al-munkar wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh